Sometimes in order to understand a company and where they are right now, you have to understand where they were in the past and start digging up some and doing some research, going back a little bit to see where they're coming from. So you don't really know their current and possibly their future until you know where they've been in the past. So if you look at Palantir in that same sort of light, you know that they've come from these big government contracts and, and a lot of it has to do with the military and there's a lot of dark spots and a lot of issues with the politics side of things. I get it, right? But one of the key things to focus on is that slowly but surely, Palantir has been, and some of their partners in the past, have been basically modernizing the entire military for a long time now. Now, given that they're probably in just a few departments here and there, and a lot of it we don't know, right? So anything I could be saying and probably will be saying is 100% speculation, guys, okay? But this is just based on the breadcrumb details that we have, and we're going to move forward with that. Now, this particular one, now you now that they're a public company, you're starting to see a lot more of the stuff, at least the stuff that they can expose to us. And as per usual, guys, this is not investment advice. This is just me doing my own research and trying to share with you as best as I can. So hopefully this helps you out in some way and it doesn't uh, encourage... You know, I don't want to encourage you to buy or anything like that. I'll tell you when I buy, but that's really up to me. So just take that for what it is. I'm going to read you an article and present it to you. We're going to go into a little bit of detail as to one of their partners that they're working with from the government and the military side, which is Anduril or Anduril. I don't know, right? But I'm pretty sure in the Lord of the Rings, you say Anduril. And uh, so we, we'll call it Anduril. Anduril. Anduril right now, if you look them up, they're gonna you're gonna see a lot of things like, oh, they're gonna IPO and all this other stuff, right? But in reality, I'm not really waiting too much for that because I don't know, I don't see too much of a growth company. They're more of like a hardware kind of company that does a little bit of software tool sets here and there. And they, they try to package together something that's very functional for the military. At least that's where they're currently standing right now, okay? The founder seems like a pretty cool guy. He's the same guy who actually uh, founded Oculus and, and designed the Oculus Rift actually. So, it's, you know, he's got a good tech and, um, uh, you know, devices background, I guess you could call it. Comes from Silicon Valley, all this kind of stuff is, you know, it, the roots are pretty good. Right now, Underworld basically makes like these little helicopters that have sensors all over them. And, um, and they also make little drones and things like that. They have some software that actually piggybacks on top of things like Gotham that kind of just manage assets and things like that. From what I can understand from the, the, the video that I've seen, which I'll post in the description below. You can go check it out. I also made a video, something similar to this. It's towards the end of this video, but you know, feel free to go check it out. I'll leave a card over here. The key thing to take away here is that Palantir and Underwell actually work together in something that's actually very revolutionary moving forward here. This is called edge computing. Now, as an engineer, let me explain something to you, okay? There's regular computing, which is, you know, you have lots of service space. You're not really worried about the space. You know, you can, you can perform, you can write code and, and do stuff very willy-nilly and, and go crazy with whatever you want to do. Now, that's mainly because you don't have restrictions like compute. You don't have restrictions like RAM. You don't have, uh, you know, a no network or low bandwidth or high latency or whatever the case is, right? So you don't have these kind of issues when you're talking about a traditional engineering sense. When you look at the edge, and when they mean edge, they're talking quite literally the, the fringes of, you know, the battlefield and the fringes of some sort of like a you know, rural setting or something where you, where you're, the devices that you would carry or the things that operate in these settings are either quite small, quite discreet, is very functional and utilitarian rather than, you know, a wholesome sort of product. These kind of devices, you know, they're made to perform in that way. It's supposed to be a single purpose or, or some sort of like a utilitarian kind of way. For it to do that, it needs a specific set of software and this software needs to run on that specific set of hardware. Now the hard part here is actually designing that software to run on that hardware, which is minimal. It's made to be durable, it's made to be functional, and it's basically made to be as cheap as possible. So that being said, the software that has to go on these things have to be very, very efficient. Like, see, when you're building a website or something, right, you can have multiple options of different code bases. You can write it in Java, you can write it in C Sharp, you can write it in React or JavaScript, whatever. When you're writing code for the edge, you don't have that choice. And even if you do, there are massive trade-offs. In anything in IT, there's trade-offs. If you pick something, there's something else got to give, okay? But when it comes to edge computing, the trade-offs are very real, very, very real. Like if you're, you're talking you know, a one extra piece of function that could be useful could reduce the battery life of that particular thing that you're you're putting that software on. In which case, it could be life or death for whoever the operator is. You guys see what I'm trying to say here? So you're you're almost trying to squeeze every single last drop out of everything when it comes to the software side of things. And really, the reason for that is it's built to do a specific purpose. That Underworld is basically partnering with Palantir from the military side, right? They they have some kind of a working relationship where Underworld develops the 
you know, edge devices and, and the hardware and Palantir for the most part delivers some of the operating system pieces in their software. So Unreal basically got a subcontract from Palantir themselves to actually manage and run the hardware portion of this thing called Titan. T-I-T-A-N, which is basically Tactical Intelligence Targeting Access Node. Okay, so it's really just a long way of saying we put a bunch of sensors on stuff and now it's going to be easier for you to look. Now it's going to be easier for you to find out where it is and go get it. <laughs> that's that's really what it is okay so let me read you a quick little blurb from this article i'll post it in the description below so feel free to go take a look on your own time okay during the first phase of this effort Unreal will collaborate with palantir and serve as the lead hardware systems architect Unreal will be responsible for the design development testing and delivery of the physical infrastructure for the titan prototype okay see what i'm saying a software-centric approach is critical to the development of the correct hardware platform and Unreal will emphasize modularity manageability and performance you see what i'm trying to say here it's very it, it, you need to be able to focus on what that thing does and to squeeze as much as you can out of the hard drive so this is a fantastic partnership and for the record it's really good to see that the military is finally starting to modernize their taking a software approach rather than you know your traditional stalwart contractors your your northrop grumman's and lockheed martins and all these kind of other kind of guys you're going with somebody who's more lean mean who really means well and it's really good to see that uh you know the u.s military is starting to modernize a little bit and move more into this era of defense so you know let's see what comes out of it but i really just wanted to bring this company out to you guys it's been sort of floated around here and there but i really suggest if you really want to understand what palantir is you have to look into their past this company is not really in their past it's actually very recent but this is the kind of stuff that they used to do in the past right so Reading about stuff like this, reading about companies like this will give you some insight as to what they're going to do for the military and what they're doing on the government side of things, just to kind of help you out a little bit and build some more context and conviction. That's it for me. I hope uh, this was very informative for you guys, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.